One very popular camera these days is the Canon A1, this camera here. And I have been shooting with this camera recently, shot a few rolls and yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about my impression of it. Now this can be described as a mid-range SLR. When it was introduced in uh, 1976, it was aimed at amateurs and it actually became quite popular and it was produced all the way until 1984. This is a black version of them. Usually they come in this uh, silver, like this Canon AV-1. Yeah, currently I'm shooting with this camera, so maybe a review of this one later also. This specific camera is a little bit beat up on the underside. It seems to have been well used, but mechanically it's been working perfectly. I have not had any problems with it. The only thing I did was to change the light seals, but that's a quite common thing to do with older cameras. One reason for its popularity is that it had uh, auto exposure. And that's well a feature which it was marketed with. That's also what it names stand for. The AE refers to auto exposure. Now you don't have the full auto exposure. You only have shutter priority. So you can put your on the lens the aperture to A for automatic, and then you set your shutter speed, and it will well calculate the aperture for you. In the viewfinder, you have a light meter, and it actually shows the aperture information, what the aperture it will use when taking a picture but it does not show what shutter speed you are currently using. So yeah, in that way, it doesn't have the full exposure information. It can also be used in full manual mode, but unfortunately, the manual mode is not very good on this camera. The light meter shows what aperture you should use, but it does not tell you which aperture you're currently on. So first of all, you have to look in the viewfinder to see what aperture it commands, and then look away at the lens to set it. So it kind of breaks the flow of taking pictures. Overall, the camera is very standardized. I mean, everything from the Film loading, rewinding is like a typical 70s, 80s uh, manual film SLR. So yeah. Also, it has some extra features such as the depth of field preview, which is activated with this button here. Also, it has a backlight uh, compensation. So if you are, your subject has a lot of strong light behind it, you can use uh, press this button and then it will overexpose the scene. So in that way, you will expose for your subject and not for the background. And also there is a electronic self timer. So yeah, you just uh, press the button and it will count down. Not the typical clock mechanism that they had uh, on the cameras from this time usually. When it comes to image quality, well, as it is with SLRs, it's mostly dependent on the lens and the film you're using. So yeah, there's nothing with the camera itself, or at least that I have noticed that it would affect the image quality negatively, like no light flares or light leaks or such things. Of course, that's given that the camera is actually serviced also, so there are no like light steals missing. One advantage with this camera is that so many were made, like millions were made of it, so there are a lot of them available. And if something breaks in it, if, yeah, then you also have more likely chance of getting it fixed because there are more spare parts available for it. Now, the things I don't like about the camera, well, first of all, you need to have batteries in it for it to work, so there are no manual settings. For example, the Nikon FE has one manual speed, so you can always use it even though the batteries run out, but that's not possible with this one, so yeah. Another thing I don't like about the camera is that it uses the Canon FD mount, or that is more like a general thing for the mount itself. But on this Canon A1 in particular, I have had problems mounting older FD lenses. Uh, for example, this uh, Vivitar Series 1 lens, you can mount it, but it, you won't be able to shoot any pictures with the lens because this um, aperture mechanism is not strong enough to move the aperture on the lens. Now, it works with older cameras, so I know there's not, nothing wrong with the lens itself. Of course, it's a third-party lens, so it might not have full compatibility guaranteed, so of course. But I have not had this problem with any other lens system, so yeah. And of course, the main thing why I'm not a big fan of this lens system is the breech lock. I mean, it, it uh, fulfills its purpose of holding a lens onto the camera very well. It won't fall off, that's guaranteed. But when mounting this, it's not very in intuitive or doesn't flow as well as uh, using a bayonet mount. Uh, so you have to be a bit more, pay more attention when you attach and detach it. And you have, sort of have to use, I mean, you can use it with one hand, I just did it with one hand, so I guess I have gotten used to these lenses after all. But Canon actually noticed this themselves, that they were at a disadvantage compared to other brands, because they made the new FD mount, which is basically a bayonet mount. So if you have the right type of lenses, 
they, they mount just like a bayonet mount. So depending on your lens, this might or might not be a problem. My overall impression of using this camera is that it is a very good mid-range SLR, so especially if you're new into film photography, it's a very good option. Although these have risen in price quite a lot recently, or during the last year, so it, that might not make it the best option if you're just willing to like experiment with film photography. For that, there are other cameras like, for example, this AV-1 is much cheaper, although you don't get the full manual exposure. Yeah, it's a good camera, a little bit overpriced at the moment, overhyped perhaps. So my final recommendation with this camera is that if you can find it for a good price, definitely get it, but also consider other options like Nikon FE or the Minolta X500 or X700, I think. Yeah, those are also very comparable. Or if you want mechanical cameras, you can always get something like this uh, SRT-102 from Minolta. Actually, yeah, it's almost the same size. It's, I don't think you find so much smaller mechanical cameras than this. So yeah, plenty of cameras, plenty of options to explore. But yeah, let's look at some more photos. Mm -hmm.